Ice giants are some of the most interesting types of planets we've found so far, and I've talked about them on this channel before. But I've mostly stuck to talking about the hottest among them, from the bright hot Quankoa with potential clouds made of vaporized titanium, to the blue evaporating Felinciom, two of my personal favorite exoplanets. These are the worlds of the Neptunian desert, which I've made a full video about. But obviously, ice giants can be much more than scorching worlds that fell too close to their stars. They can also be extremely cold, like Uranus and Neptune, or they can be somewhere in the middle of these two extremes, and that's where things truly get interesting. Tempered ice giants are some of the most interesting types of exoplanets we've ever come across. I think at this point they've become my favorite type of planet in the entire universe. Because they orbit in the habitable zones of their stars, temperatures are right for liquid water to exist in their upper atmospheres. This means that in the top layers of the atmospheres of these worlds, they could have fairly Earth-like conditions but that would only be a narrow slice of the true environments of these worlds, so they would simultaneously be utterly alien. Of course, not every tempered ice giant is going to be the same. By tempered ice giant, what I mean is any ice giant in the habitable zone of its star, where temperatures are right for liquid water to exist. There's going to be wild variations in the environments of these worlds, just like with rocky planets. There are four major objects in the solar system all around the sun's habitable zone, Earth, the Moon, Mars, and Venus. Each of these worlds is entirely different from one another, with completely unique surface conditions. Temperate ice giants will have similar amounts of diversity depending on their formation conditions, size, orbit, temperature, what type of star they orbit, and a whole host of other factors. They'll range from hotter versions of Neptune all the way to Hyshan planets, which I'll get to later. But so far, I haven't seen anyone make a full video about these types of planets. So that's what I'm here to do. This video will serve as a tour of what I think is one of the most interesting types of world in the universe. We actually know a surprising amount of ice giants in the habitable zones of their stars, so I'll try to cover as many of the interesting ones as I can. We'll start with one of the most iconic exoplanet systems known so far, 55 Cancri. You might know 55 Cancri from the planet 55 Cancri E, which is officially named Janssen. Most videos about 55 Cancri exclusively talk about Janssen, but there are four other planets in the system, including the temperate ice giant Harriet. Harriet is the fourth planet of the 55 Cancri system, orbiting the larger of the two stars in the system, Copernicus, along with the other four known planets. Harriet's exact mass and radius are unknown, but its minimum mass is about half the size of Saturn, or somewhere around 50 times more massive than Earth. Harriet has a 262-day orbit that puts it within the habitable zone of Copernicus, but its orbit is fairly elliptical, meaning temperatures on Harriet will vary as it moves around Copernicus. The exact temperatures of Harriet are unknown, but they likely range between negative 180 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 73 to 27 degrees Celsius. Assuming Harriet is about half the size of Saturn not any bigger, because that is a possibility, it could have fairly Earth-like surface gravity. As well as this, Harriet very likely has water clouds like Earth, so it could rain here when the temperatures are warmer. Harriet is my personal favorite planet of the whole 55 Cancri system, but there's still a lot we don't know about it. Only the planet's minimum mass is known, so it could be bigger than half the mass of Saturn, which would make it a temperate gas giant, not an ice giant. Ice giants and gas giants are extremely different composition-wise, so I'll avoid talking about gas giants in this video. From what we know so far, ice giants are usually smaller, but I can't find where the dividing line is. But gas giants and ice giants are very different, which is the main reason why they were given separate classifications in the first place. Anyway, I've said that these tempered ice giants may have the potential to be fairly Earth-like, if you're at the top layers of the atmosphere. But they stop being Earth-like very quickly once you start going down. K218b is a mini-Neptune that seems to have gotten popular overnight, when the potential detection of dimethyl sulfide, a sign of life, was detected in its atmosphere. I've said this in multiple videos already, but I might as well say it again, because there's a lot of misinformation about this planet. Dimethyl sulfide was not detected in K218b. The signal of it was very weak, too weak to actually confirm its presence. We only detected slight evidence of dimethyl sulfide, not an actual confirmation. Anyways, K218b barely qualifies as an ice giant. It's about 8 times the mass of Earth, making it a mini-Neptune, which is a subcategory of ice giant. But I'll be including it in this video, because it allows me to talk about even more planets with misinformation about them later. K218b is in the habitable zone of its star, and so, like Harriet, could have temperate conditions in the upper atmosphere, as far as gravity and temperature are concerned. But along with the slight evidence of dimethyl sulfide, James Webb Space Telescope also detected other chemicals in K218b's atmosphere that could indicate the presence of oceans. It seems weird to have oceans in a planet made of gas, but that's actually how ice giants work. Both Uranus and Neptune have layers made of a mixture of water and ammonia that act somewhat similar to liquid oceans. But because of K218b's smaller size, these oceans might have resembled Earth's far more than Neptune's, 
which would have opened up the possibility for actual habitability. This ocean, if it existed, would have potentially been hundreds of miles deep, similar to the theoretical oceans on the much hotter mini-Neptune and Ipocha. This would have classified K218b as the Haitian planet, which I'll get to later in this video. But unfortunately, K218b probably isn't Haitian. In fact, based on the JWST data, K218b is probably as far away from a Haitian planet as you can get, with oceans made of lava fitting the data better. If this is true, this eliminates any hope for habitability on K218b. But just like the dimethyl sulfide, these lava oceans aren't yet confirmed to exist, but they do have much more evidence for their existence than the dimethyl sulfide. But there's another planet similar to K218b that has a much higher chance of not being an uninhabitable super Venus. You've probably heard that it could be potentially Earth-like, but that's actually not true. It's far stranger. Welcome to Kepler-22b. Kepler-22b has been clickbaited to no end on YouTube, with some people having the audacity to call this planet more habitable than Earth. But that's not even remotely true, as Kepler-22b is much more likely to be another mini-Neptune with no solid surface. I talked about this planet and K218b in my last video, so apologies if I sound like I'm repeating myself. I don't usually like talking about the same planets in back-to-back -back videos, but that's just how it worked out here. But there's also a lot of misinformation about this planet anyway, so I might as well talk about it again. Like Harriet, Kepler-22b's mass is not known, but it's likely somewhere around 9 Earth masses, which could make it even bigger than K218b. We know next to nothing about this world, except that it's definitely not rocky. An Earth-like composition for Kepler-22b has been ruled out, meaning that it most likely resembles an ice giant more than a rocky planet. Because of this, there is a possibility that Kepler-22b is a Haitian planet. A Haitian planet, if you haven't heard the term before, is somewhere between an ocean planet and an ice giant, with an extremely thick hydrogen-dominated atmosphere, like an ice giant, but with liquid water oceans, like an ocean planet. So far, we haven't actually confirmed the existence of any Haitian planets, but we have many candidates, one of which being Kepler-22b. A lot of the talk about Haitian planets relates to the potential for life on these worlds. Haitian oceans would be hundreds or even thousands of miles deep, which is a lot of area for life to thrive. But there's a difference between life being able to survive and life being able to form. We don't really know how life began on Earth, but it almost certainly required volcanic activity in some capacity, whether that be in deep sea hydrothermal vents or hot springs near the surface. Haitian planets would not have either of these. So, we really have no idea how life would even be able to form in such an environment. From what we know so far, it's pretty likely that the oceans of Kepler-22b, should they exist, are completely dead. I talk about this idea more in my last video about habitable exoplanets if you want to know more, but all you need to know for this video is that yes, Haitian planets have a chance of being habitable, but might not actually be able to create life in the first place. The only way I can think of for a Haitian planet to have life would be if it got it from somewhere else via panspermia, but that on its own is pretty unlikely. This is another reason why these worlds are so interesting. Everywhere on Earth you find water, you find life. We find it everywhere from the oceans to rivers to lakes trapped under Antarctic ice sheets and toxic hot springs. This might not be true on tempered ice giants and Haitian planets. Imagine a world with oceans thousands of miles deep and having nothing, not even a single bacteria, anywhere, across the entire planet. Nothing but endless rain, wind, and water above an atmosphere so dense be considered an ocean in its own right all the way down. It's something that feels familiar on the surface, but the sheer scale of it all drowns out any sense of these places being Earth-like. These planets, at least in my opinion, look like they're going to be dead. But clearly, planets don't need life to be interesting. And nowhere is this more true than Kepler-47c. This planet is between 2 and 5 Earth masses, but it has a radius comparable to Neptune's, making it unlikely to have a solid surface. Because of this high radius but low mass, Kepler-47c would actually have a lower surface gravity than Earth, if it had a surface. Kepler-47c also has an equilibrium temperature of negative 19 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 28 Celsius. But this is likely to be much higher thanks to the planet's atmosphere trapping heat. Earth's equilibrium temperature is negative 19 degrees Celsius, or negative 1 Fahrenheit, but thanks to our greenhouse effect that number moves up to 59 Fahrenheit, or 15 Celsius. So, Kepler-47c will likely have much hotter temperatures in reality, making it potentially very temperate, more so than Harriet. This also means it could have an atmosphere rich in water vapor, and therefore it could have rain. Because of this lower gravity, this rain would be far different than it is on Earth. Not only that, but Kepler-47c is a circumbinary planet. This means it orbits two stars at once, Kepler-47a and Kepler-47b. But other than some speculation, we don't really know what Kepler-47c is like, just that it exists. That's the case for most tempered ice giants so far. Because of their low chances for life, they haven't been studied all that much. 
But as I've hopefully shown so far, these are extremely interesting worlds that deserve to be studied more. There are dozens of more planets like this I haven't mentioned in this video, including an unconfirmed temperate ice giant in the Alpha Centauri system, but there simply isn't enough known about them to say anything interesting. We barely know the characteristics of any of these worlds. Most of what I've said in this video has been based on models and speculation, and that's subject to change once we actually get around to characterizing these worlds. Temperate ice giants and hydrogen plants are simultaneously some of the most familiar and alien environments a planet could possibly have. Their chances for life may be low, but that doesn't matter. These are extremely interesting places that deserve to be studied more. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space colonization.